Good morning. Amen. Glory to God. Father God, thank you. Amen. Well, thank God for you. Amen. It is 10 a.m. on this wonderful, beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. So we thank God for you in all your respective places. Amen. So we want to thank you this morning for joining Faith 50 Christian Center. And I'm Pastor O. Amen. Praise God. Uh, the senior pastor of Faith 50 Christian Center. And so we want to thank you this morning for joining us with this morning's service. Amen. Now, in a few moments, I'm going to get ready to teach the word of God that I promise you would be, I mean, amazing. And I've been laboring uh, uh, all week on what direction God wants to go for today. And so I'm excited about today's lesson. And uh, man, I'm telling you, I want you to be excited about it because I promise you it is going to bless your life and you're going to learn some things that you did not know before. Amen. So we want to thank God for you at this moment. Please go ahead and tag somebody. Hey, let them know that Pastor O and Faith 50 Christian Center is live. So get on your phones, your iPads, uh, uh, whatever you got, your Android, and uh, send a little text out, tell them to join you and uh, uh, for this morning's service, amen. If you do not have a church home in the uh, local greater Huntsville area, amen, we definitely would appreciate you uh, tuning in, amen, and being a part of our service. And, uh, and and we can't thank God enough for you, amen. So we wanna thank everybody that's uh, across the United States and especially in this area, for having this opportunity uh, this morning that I have to share with you the living, the amazing word of God uh, for your life. Uh, that uh, I promise you the Holy Ghost is going to share with us a lot of stuff uh, that uh, should be able to increase us, be, uh, able to make our life so much better. Amen. So tag them. Uh, let them know that Pastor O is live and we're getting ready right now uh, to go forth and pray and jump inside the word of God on this great Sunday morning. Look chilly. But it is awesome. A little chilly, but it's great. Amen. So thank God for you. Amen. Let's pray. And uh, we're going to jump into it. Amen. For this morning. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor to thy name. Father God, we thank you for your amazing word. It is so amazing uh, for my life. Father God, we thank you for it. That the word of God is going into inner essence of who I am. And it's making me so much better in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you for thinking about me inside of your word. And Father, I thank you right now that your word will never return into your void. It always accomplished that which you set it out to do. And Father, we give you in advance all the thanks, all the glory for what the word is going to do now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you very so much that this word, is the, this anointed word is a burden removing, yoke destroying power, God. And it changes things in my life. And Father, we thank you for today for them being healed, been set free and delivered. And we give you praise, God. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Praise God. Uh, once again, like I said, I am Pastor O, uh, Senior Pastor Faith at the Christian Center. And we are in this amazing series that we started back in January, beginning to talk about uh, kingdom first. Uh, uh, in other words, applying the kingdom of God as the, as the number one thing inside of my life. And we got that from Matthew 6 and 33, where uh, the Bible, uh, uh, the scripture declares, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all these things will be added unto you. Now, what that basic was me uh, uh, have a meaning there. God says, "Look in verse twenty-five of that same chapter of uh, uh, number six. He said, "Don't worry about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna wear, how you're gonna pay your bill. Don't you worry about those things." He's saying, "Look, I know you have needed those things, but I need you to have a clear understanding. Even though you got you have needed those things, it's not the most important thing." in your life. Oh, that's good right there. It's not the most important thing in your life. The most important thing in your life is the kingdom of God. Seek me, keep me first, keep me number one on the highest priority priority list and live the right way. And because the Bible begins to talk about in his righteousness, God says inside of my kingdom, when you make Jesus Lord of my life and you come inside the kingdom of God, there is a way of living. Uh, a, a direction, a way you should go. It's not a bunch of do's and don'ts, but it, when you embrace the kingdom of God, when you come inside of this culture, I'm going to give you a help a call, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and it's going to help manifest uh, the fruit, the character of who I am, and this culture will be a part of your life. It's, 
as long as when you come in, you have to embrace it. Now watch this. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith, not because the kingdom of God and this culture is difficult. It's because that world, that culture that you came out of, came out of, is still in you. And whichever, uh, 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 whoever controls the minds, uh, be able to set the rules and laws on the inside of your life. So I'm in this world and I, I, I and I'm walking on the, in, in my earth suit called the flesh. And the Bible says no good thing deal from my fret in my flesh. So I got to be careful and watch it. Even though I'm in this world, I'm living from a from a spiritual perspective because, you know, the kingdom of heaven, which is a natural place. Uh, God's culture is a spiritual, this spiritual culture is going to bring us out of our life. But I have this old nature, this, this, this old nature that he begins to talk about. And we see it over in Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. He begins to talk about this old nature that, hey, look, I got to be transformed. I got to do some renewing of my mind because in this over here, in this new arena, this new culture that I've embraced that I'm in, I can't live like the way I used to live and be effective and efficient inside the kingdom of God. And so this is a fight that you have to deal with inside of even the best of us, even the ones that have been saved for uh, uh, many days, uh, a few years, has to have the understanding that, uh, hey, look, man, hey, it, if you don't watch out, it'll get the best stuff. And that's what's going to happen today as we uh, begin to make the turn to look at today's passes. And uh, we're going to use one of our, one of our brothers in Christ uh, that we're going to use today as our biblical example in the Bible. And the no sense in throwing rocks at him because I don't know your situation. If I did, I, I could use you, you know what I'm saying? But uh, but since I know we know his his situation is out there on Front Street, that's when things are written in the Bible, it's on, it's on Front Street for our learning. The Bible declares those things that was written before times are are, are, are there for our advantage, or for our, our, our learning, so we can learn uh, some things. And that's what's going to happen today. We're going to be able to use our brother, uh, our Samson, to be able to to get a good understanding uh, of what's going on on the inside of, my, of your life. And so hopefully we would embrace this and have a good understanding so our life can be so much better. Amen. So I'm so godly proud of you that's been here, been following me for a little while. And I'm promising you today, it's going to, uh, some stuff's going to jump off the table inside of your life and it's going to make your life so much better. So there's a culture war. There's a battle of supremacy on the inside of your life. Whether we like it or not, whether we want to believe it or not, the bottom line at the end of the day, there is a battle for supremacy, amen, over your mind. Remember, we learned last time that the Bible says we faint in our in our mind. And so we got to be careful uh, because God wants your mind and the, and the devil wants your mind. So 1 Peter uh, 1 and 14, let's jump into today's lesson. And I need you to stay with me because I need for you to be a good class so that we can move, you know, smoothly through this thing, amen. So 1 Peter, uh, uh, 1 Peter 1 and verse number 14 says, so you must live as God's obedient children. You must live. How are we supposed to live? As God's obedient children. Now, I'm going to articulate some things and break things down because I, I don't want you to jump past. Every lesson, I believe, is a vitally important for your life. So I tell people when a pastor steps up on Sunday morning or Wednesday, whatever he's teaching word of God, He's got lives at stake. It's not time to play no game. It's not time for a game or gimmicks. You have to teach the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, because people's lives are at stake because they're waiting on the word to hear from God. And they got to take that word into their life and use that in everyday life so that their life can be effective and they can be efficient in life. So you must live as God's obedient children. I need you to listen to me inside in this culture, in this culture that we in when we make Jesus Lord of our life and say, God, you have ruling, govern authority over my life. You are the final authority over my life. You are the final decision of my life. All of my expectations. Oh, my God. All my expectations are set, are set by the word of God. Amen. Are based on the word of God. And he says, now, look, I got to live as obedient children. That's what I, we, we have to do. Now, so we can't be ducking and dodging. And watch this. And the devil's working overtime to try to get you to duck and to dodge so you can forfeit all your benefits inside the kingdom of God. 
The benefits don't go away. They're just forfeited until you get in line with the word of God because the devil has his laws and rules that he's trying to do. And guys, look, God has got his laws, his commandment, everything set up for us. But in order for us to enjoy them or receive them inside my life, I have to walk this, this right kind of life to walk in righteousness. Amen. He said, now watch this. Don't you slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but he says, now I know better now. See, you ought to be, that's a happy moment for you right now because I know better now. See, devil, you would have got me on yesterday when I did not know. But today, because I'm listening to this word of God taught by Faith the Christian Center from Pastor O, I know better now. So watch this. He says, don't you slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. Now, that's the way it was. That was ways before. I would walk in the fertility, which we're going to see, of my mind, you know, emptiness, shadowness. I used to walk there, do anything I wanted to do, any which way I wanted to do it. But now God is saying, no, 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 not anymore. Don't, don't you slip back into those old ways. You know how it used to be, you know, back in, you know, on, on, if he'd have caught you, caught you a few days ago, a few, a few months ago, you know what I'm saying? You, somebody cussed you, you'd have cussed them out. Let's just be real. You, you, you'd have cussed them out. Got it? But thanks be to God. Hey, hey, I'm not slipping back into my old ways. You got me? Because in my old ways, if you you did something bad, negative to me, bad to me, said something bad about me, I'm going to say something bad about you. Those are my old ways. He said, now, don't you slip. And that's the difference coming out of that old culture into this new culture that we're in now. Watch this. I can't act the way I used to act. I, I can't do some things I can't do like I used to do. And we're going to be able to see that. Amen. So thanks, God. He said, now, don't you slip back. Now, if it was not possible to slip back or go back to my old ways, there's no reason for God to say that. If I did not have the ability to slip back and go back into my old ways, there's no reason for God to say, don't you slip back. Because my old ways are always knocking at the door. Thanks be to God that the word of God and my relationship with Jesus, with God, keeps all my foolishness, all my craziness under wrap. The only time I get in trouble, whoo, when I get sour on my relationship with God. I get distance between me and God, then I get to acting up, I get to acting a fool. But that's why I have to stay in tune or in line uh, 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 with God and stay in relationship with the Father because if I don't, I'm going to slip back. I'm going to slip back into my old ways. You know what that sounds like? That almost sounds like evil communication corrupt good manners. And we're going to see some things today in today's lesson where uh, you, you got to be careful not to slip back into your old way or old patterns. Old pattern. Remember old patterns? The old pattern, the way, the way things used to be. And you know how it was. You know, I said it last time, you know, you was very cunning. You know what I'm saying? You get things done. You know what I'm saying? Use what you got to use to get the way you want to get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the devil wants you to use your hips. And God's like, no, no, baby. No longer do you need to use your use your hips any, any, any longer. You got it? So those sort of things. So I don't want you, I don't, we don't want to slip back. Got it? So Deuteronomy 18 and 9. Just stay with me for a moment. We're going to get to, we're going to get to where we need to be. He says that when you enter the land, which your Lord God gives you, you should not return uh, to learn, the, uh, learn to imitate the detasteful things of those nations. Now he said, now look, I'm going to bring you in the new stuff. Got it. I'm going to bring you in the new stuff. I'm going you know, to bring you into a new land that's surely flowing uh, uh, with milk and honey. In other words, I'm going to bring you in a land where, where you, don't, you don't have trouble like you used to have trouble. You know you know how you used to have trouble. You don't have that trouble no more. And uh, I'm going to take you to the place where, you know, you're going to get a little land, a little property, you know, everything I can run. Don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to bring you into good land, you know, get you that nice job that you've been looking for. I'm, I'm going to bring you out from where you, from where you are. I'm going to bring you to land that's surely flowing in, in the area where you where you got peace in your mind, you know what I'm saying? You got joy. You wake up, you go to bed with joy, you wake up with joy. Joy just all around. As a matter of fact, you married a woman named Joy. So you just got joy all around you. I'm bringing you to this to this place what God is saying to where you can thrive. You know, you pay before your bill even come, you've already paid it. I'm bringing you to to that level. I'm bringing you to the level where you can help other folks. You got no problem with sowing seeds all around. Who needs some help? Let me help somebody. He made me the get he made me the giver. Hey, so you 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 have entered to that all this territory that God's talking about. 
God is saying, hey, look, now that I got you there and I brought you into this place where, where now you can enjoy all the benefits, oh my Lord, that you've been, you've been yearning for, you've been seeking for all your life in this relationship, but because you have made Jesus Lord of your life and you've embraced this kingdom and this culture that I have, now all this stuff, let me say all these things I'm going to add into your life, and now God has added all this stuff into your life. He said, now when you get into that land, Shalom in the land. Yeah, 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 let know I'm in the land. I'm in the land. I'm in my flow. You know, not talking about just money, but we're talking about the whole concept of who you are. You know the things you wanted. You wanted peace in, inside of your life. And now God's brought you into the God kind of peace. How about that? Look at the Lord. Won't he do it? Come on, tell somebody, won't he do it? And so now he says, now you have entered this land that I promised you that I was going to do for your life. But he says, now watch this. You should not learn to imitate the distasteful things of those other nations. You know where you came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of y'all, I ain't going to even say skid row, but some of y'all, you know, maybe, maybe you, was in some, you, was, you was in a bad place. You came out of that. Always walking in frustration, always angry, always just mad. You know how it was, you know, where you came from. You know what I'm saying? But God is, thanks be to God is giving you the new life. Oh my God. He said, now look, enjoy where you're at. But you're not going to be able to enjoy where you're at as long as you try to maintain that uh, old nature, old culture, thinking about the things that you left. Now, you know, that happened to somebody in the Bible one time. God tried to move them out of one culture to a new culture. Oh, my Lord. And he said, now, as they was leaving and uh, God was destroying the old life and she looked back, the Bible declares she turned into stone because she looked back. Don't you look back? When God's brought you into this land, don't, don't you look back. Don't you look back. Psalms 106 and 35. Now watch this. This is the children of Israel. He's beginning to talk about these nations once again. And you know the story as he was bringing them out of Egypt and uh, over those 40 years. Could have took them a few months, but it took them 40 years. But he says, now watch this in Psalms 106 and 35. He said, but they mingle with nations, and watch this, and learn their practices. But they mingled with the nations and learned their practices. You know, it's kind of hard to learn about other nations if I never visit, visit the country. It's kind of hard. You know, you can talk about Russia all you want to, but if you never visit Russia, it's, I ain't know you what you're going to really say about it. It's something you heard, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's just, it ain't nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? And so if you've never been over in Africa and all the uh, uh, some of the other places, I remember going to Liberia in the early 1990s and it was a war torn area. You know what I'm saying? And so you go over there, you look at the destruction, all the stuff over there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you, you learn about the thing. But if you never visit a place, it's hard. It's hard to practice a culture that you don't know anything about. about. But God says, but they mingle with the nations. And learn their price. See, what happens to us is that we'll, 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 we'll play. We, we'll, we'll, we'll play with them. And when it says nations, what it's beginning to talk about, it's not saying that you don't uh, hang around anybody that's not saved. That's just crazy. That don't make no sense. How are you going to be effective witness without hanging around folk who are unsaved? That's not what he's talking about. He's being able to say, if you're going to hang around and be a good witness, with other words, you make sure that you meet on your ground where you have an advantage Watch this. You had an advantage to be an effective witness. How dare I go into your turf and not be able to be in charge or in control of the situation? Don't allow the situation, or at least in the practice, don't allow that stuff to turn your to, to turn your heart or to turn you away from me. So God puts out restrictions, not do's and don'ts. God is just saying some things are just not beneficial for you. That's just the key. Some things are just not beneficial for you. And and look, in the next term I'm about to say, don't you get mad. I, 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 it's just biblical. And God didn't say some folk, some folk, some folk are not good for you. I will hope that everybody is, but some folks are just, are just, are just, are just not good for you. So he says, now you need to identify them. The Bible says, mark them, watch, mark them that causes division. All God is saying in this, in your culture, in your walk, you better watch out for, for certain folk. Mark them. Let, in other words, I want you to be aware when you come in contact with them, you understand what you got to deal with. And that's all God is saying to you. Glory to God. He's not kind of keep you away from it. He wants you to mark them. Just know now they don't practice the things that you practice that's going to make life effective and efficient for you inside the kingdom of God. He said, now you watch out for those one. They have been marked. So he said, don't mingle with the nations and learn their practices. 
Amen. So in other words, God is beginning to tell us that uh, there are spiritual dangers with uh, our, our distinct spiritual dangers when we associate with those who are not in sync with your culture. You got to watch it. Shots, you got to watch. Yeah, you got to watch that stuff. You got to watch because what happened is they'll wear you down. I know folks uh, uh, believe that I, I can I can help anybody. Now, watch this terminology I'm going to use. Imagine yourself standing up in a chair. There you go. Get in, get in your chair. Stand on top in the chair. Bring somebody to you that's standing below you. Okay, so you're probably standing about five, six feet over there. Have them stand limb and ask them for the hand and try to pull them up. Can't do it, right? It's hard. It'd be hard to pull them up. But tell them to grab hold of your arm and snatch you down. Boom. You're going to fall just that quick. What is my implication? It's much easier for someone to pull you down than for you to pull them up. Oh, that's good. That's good. See? See, we think we can help everybody, but uh, it's easier for you to fall than to pull them up. I'm just moving right along. So in other words, don't let them wear you down because day by day, they'll keep knocking. And if you don't watch it, they'll wear you down. Don't worry. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Amen. So <sighs> we got to watch it. Amen. And so we got to watch this because it is critical. I mean, critical. It is critical by the people we hang around because it influences our behavior and we've got to be careful. You have to be careful who we hang around in this culture. So in order for us, once again, to be effective and efficient, God is sharing with us something today that's going to help you. Now, the devil is a, uh, we know that based off first Peter, that the devil is our adversary. John 10 and 10 said he come to steal, kill and destroy, but that's not his main mission. We're going to get to that. That's just, that's just things that he do, but that is not his overall goal nor his mission in life, but he has something else he's trying to do. Amen. So we're going to begin to look at that. So what happens is God warns us about this devil. We won. He says, first Peter begins to say, he's our adversary. And then it says, the devil. He's against you. In other words, he comes from that old world of that culture that we came from. That's him. He does not. Now, listen to me. He can care less about the car, the cash, the crib, and the clothes. Devil don't care about all that stuff about you. I know, I know, I know, I know folks are thinking, well, uh, you don't want my car to work because he want me to spend all my money on, on car repair. The devil don't care about your car. The devil does not care nothing about your car. Oh, John, look around. He has something tired. I spend money. I spend money for. He don't care about your money. He don't care about your money. What the devil is really after, he's a schemer. And we're going to break him down in just a moment because we need him, we need him before we go over to the judges and talk about Samson. To get today's lesson, he's a schemer, a scammer, and he don't care about your cash, your your your, your, your cash, the car, the clothes, not the crib. All he cares about is you is putting distance in your relationship with God. He does not want you to be in tune or in relationship with God. Because think about this now, he's smart. So that's why he uses all these schemes to try to uh, uh, get you to say, oh, that's why I got no money. Go, God, I had to pay for all this other stuff. He's kind of get you to look at the physical aspect thing that you have. And now you're going to blame God because you lost your house or your car. But that's not what he's, that's not, that's not the whole reason. He's, all that stuff is just on the outside. But he, what he really wants you to turn your back and doubt God and tear up your relationship with God. So you'll keep disciplining you in, between you and God. Because as long as you keep distancing you and God, now you're going to act the fool. Because now I'm not in tune with God because he knows the Bible in Mark 9, 23. He said, now, if thou canst believe with God, all things are possible. See, he know this. So if I, the devil said, if I get, if I break up the relationship between you and God and you put distance between them, now with God, all things are not going to be impossible. I got you. And that's the key. But see, in the world, we've been looking at him taking the car, the cash, the cure, and the clothes. And that's just a cover up. That's just a scheme. Because what he really wants to tear up is the relationship. Oh, yeah. He wants to tear up the relationship. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at him. So the devil is a schemer. A schemer. He's a schemer and he's a scammer. But watch it. He's not dumb. Now, watch what he does. You got to listen to this because this is vitally important for your life in today's lesson that I want you to leave with today. Be like, oh, 
I got that thing now. Yes. So one of the definitions of, of a schemer is a is, 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 uh, schemes, a schemes, devil come up with schemes or strategies for his attack on you, on us. He has a plan of action. It is an elaborate systematic plan of a course of action designed to achieve a major or overall aim. And his major overall aim is you tearing up the relationship between you and God where you don't trust him. You doubt him because he knows you can't get anything to work with doubt, with doubt in your heart. It's not going to work. So he comes up with schemes, strategy. It's almost like a military operation that he's planned against you. He has an offensive attack against you. So if this don't work, he go to plan A, B, C, and he's got every alphabet. He uses them all to try to wow you. Amen. It's an underhanded plan. You yeah, see there? The devil's underhanded. Yes, he is underhanded. Amen. The Bible declares that he's a liar. He was a liar from the beginning and he is the father of all lies. So he don't know what, he don't even know anything about you, but he always plants the lie. It's a plot. A plan to achieve some action. It's a peculiar, a peculiar idea into the fact. He's kind of put some things in effect all around him. Telling you who don't like you, who don't love you, all that. That's how he always keeps families toe up from the bottom up. Because he always put all these issues out there for him. He, and he sits back and he just laughs. Glory to God. So watch what God does. God begins to say uh, in, in, in the Bible, Ephesians 4 and 14, he uses Paul. Paul had warned, warned us about the devil's scheme to disrupt the unity of the body. So he says, as a result, we are no longer children tossed uh, here and there by ways and carried away by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man of the craftiness of deceitful scheming. Remind yourself that. God has said we're no longer like little children. Toss two and four. Shot, I got to grow up. Notice he's saying that you're not little children. And the way God said, you should get this in your elementary teaching. You should get how he works, the schemes and the strategies. That's the key. I should get that early on. Come on, say it, shot early on. Yeah, I should get that early on. Because when I get mature, in other words, I embrace this cult, culture and I begin to grow up. Yeah, I'm reigning supreme with my father now. Watch this. Them old things that, that, that I came from always all not bother me no more. Okay? So, he's saying the, scheme, the schemes of the devil. The devil has what I like to call, in the Greek, that word means Pacific scheme. The devil is Pacific. Shot, he knows. He knows because, you know, we ran our mouth. When we was out there, you know you run your mouth. You run your mouth, just oh, oh, that's my weakness. I can't, I don't like that shit. That's that break me down right there. Who are we? I make me weak in my knees. He's listening. He knows. He knows. He got, he's got a file cabinet. He's <laughs> on his computer. He, he's, he's got a file on you. Mm -hmm. He got, he's got a file, and he got everything about you. Every craftiness, cunning ways. That's what the Bible says. You're drawn away by your own lust. The devil don't draw you away. You draw you away. Oh, I need you to catch that. The devil does not draw, draw you away. You do that. The Bible says you're drawn away by your own lust. He knows what's in you. He, he just dangled the carrot. He just dangled the carrot. He just dangled the carrot. If you, if you like a, 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 a tall, dark, and chocolate, what you think you're going to get? Dark, handsome, chocolate. If you light them 36, 25, 24, what you think you're going to get? 36, 25, and 24. Hallelujah. You like a little white chocolate? What you think you're going to see? A little white chocolate. You like Spaniolo chocolate? He's going to see you Spaniolo chocolate. What you like? European chocolate? Whatever you like. He knows. Come on, come on, come on. You got to let him know. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. Go man. And see, look, he knows, and we still over here lying and denying. I ain't got no problem. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm with the Lord. No, you got lust in you. Come on. I'm going to be lying. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you saying praise the Lord, but when we see you outside, Outside of church, in there, yeah, yeah, because we all act good going to church. We all act good when we go to church. You know what? We put on our best behaviors. Yes, we do. But, baby, late in the midnight hour, little, 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 little Ray, little Ray, I, 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 you know what I was going to say? I was going to say, little Ray sneaking in, or Shanae sneaking in. 
But now we're so bold as Christians, we don't let, we don't let them sneak in. Just give them a key. Come on in front door. Come on in. Come on in. We ain't sneaking. You ain't got to sneak in. Come on in. Five o'clock in the afternoon. Come on in. Praise the Lord. Let me keep moving. Let me keep moving before I get caught up. So he's got Pacific scheme. And these schemes are tailor-made for each person. He has that. That's all part of his life. Amen. Uh, so we got to be careful. Amen. So the devil can only present. The devil is a presenter uh, of uh, things to you. Amen. We're in full control. We're in full control because it says, therefore, since we have such great cloud of witness surrounding us, let us lay aside every uh, 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 weight and sin which easily entangles us and let us run the endurance of the race that is set before. So the devil knows there are some things, watch this, that are easily, that we easily entangle us. Why? Because he was over there, we was partying with him and he kept a file. He knows what easily entangles us. Maybe it's the chocolate ice cream. Maybe it's the vanilla ice cream. Maybe it's strawberry. Whatever it is, he knows. Shout, he knows. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the secret bottle with the little worm in the bottle. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's that. Maybe it's a cup of joint. Maybe it's synthetic. Whatever it is, he knows. Come on. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. So he presents. Shout he's present. So the devil will use what I like to call artificial intelligence. He doesn't know, so he keeps throwing things at you. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Satan's schemes to destroy us and harm us is built around what we call stealth and deception. He's got to try to deceive it. Stealth, like a step bomber. You ever determined military? A step bomber where it comes... It's like artificial intelligence. They use that common drop the bomb on you. And what it is, it sneaks in. A step bomber sneaks in undetected. See, military. He sneaks in undetected and just drops something on you. Boom, like a napalm bomb. And everything just blows up. And so that's what he's trying to do over your life. The devil's kind of sneak in undetected in your life. And he's dropping bombs on you. Yeah, he dropped a bomb on you. Yeah, he's dropping a bomb on you. And next time we look around, you're going to blow up. And you sit back and wonder, what happened? The devil has, has invaded your territory. <laughs> and you didn't pull down the stronghold. You missed, you missed the clan. So that's why it says in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his what? Of his devices. Amen. So let's move to today's lesson. Amen. To, uh, uh, to get us where we need to be today, because I don't want to leave you with definitely not having this. So and over in Judges chapter 14, let me give you uh, uh, some synopsis of it uh, before we really jump into uh, uh, our point today. Amen. So we got to realize that uh, what God is, is when we come inside this kingdom of, uh, of God and this new kingdom, some of us can stubbornly hold on to our old nature. Shout, you got to let it go. You can't, some things you got just to let it go. How you let it go, Pastor? Just let it go. Some things you have to just let go go to enjoy the new kingdom. Amen. You can't stubborn and hold on to all that old stuff from a long time ago. Amen. I also often tell this joke about people in my, in my family, my family, come on my family. So I can't talk about yours. I don't know yours. And, uh, they be, they, 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 they old, they're older than me. So that means older than 55. And, uh, and I listen to them and they, and they be holding stuff, uh, against, uh, other family members for like last 50 years. I believe that just by dumb. That's just stupid. But anyway, move right along. In other words, they're holding on. Hold on. They hold on to old stuff, the old nature. And we do that same, the same way inside the kingdom of God. We hold on to the old nature. Amen. We can sometimes be so accustomed to our old nature that we cannot appreciate the brand new citizenship and culture uh, that was offered by us and enjoy all the benefits. Amen. So, in other words, even though he's delivered us out of the old abundance, sometimes we refuse to enjoy the privileges of the kingdom of God. And, uh, and so we'll live an inferior lifestyle, amen, just like a dog who returns to his own vomit. Same way, we do the same thing. So what happened is people, us as Christian believers, we refuse to be recultured. That's the catch. We just refuse it. There's nothing you can do about it. I wish I could help everybody, but everybody's not going to accept the gospel. Yeah, everybody's not going to want to be recultured, even though they say they do not want to be called. They love the old way. Praise God. Amen. So we got to we got to watch out. Amen. So in this study and, and, uh, and judges, you just go to Judges 14 and let's begin to break this down. Samson is one of the what I like to call one of the most recognizable judges that ever ruled over Israel. OK, uh, before he became, you know, as, as a time uh, that he was a king. 
Uh, he was a Nazarite, and we're going to break that down. Was a person that was set us set apart uh, uh, for for the kingdom of God, for God to use them in a mighty and amazing way. And uh, and their lifestyle is dedicated to God. And there and, and there were certain restrictions and uh, out there. And it's like when you come out of your old culture into this new one, you know. God does have some restrictions. Let's just be honest with you. They're not do's and don'ts, but there are there are some restrictions. God gives us some amazing advice, uh, and, and I believe those advices that God gives to us for our life is really there just to help us. But if you don't watch and get recultured, you're going to think that God's put all these these restrictions there to harm you. That's just not the case. But the devil we're presenting. Remember, I told you before, the devil is nothing but a presenter. And if you don't watch it, you'll begin to believe the lie because he's smooth. With his presentation. Oh, smooth, 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 smooth. Because he knows what you like. And so, Samson broke a lot of the Nazarite vows. Amen. He was very gifted. Uh, uh, had incredible strength. But he lost his strength because of Deliah. Uh, Deliah uh, uh, betrayed him to the Philistines. Amen. And he, he began to get blinded and he was enslaved. <sighs> Thanks be to God at the end of his life, God restored him. And he was able to destroy uh, more in his death than he did while he was living. But here's the catch. That was not supposed to be a story. That was not supposed to be Samson's story. It's just like you. Did, where you at currently now? That's not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not your story. That's not the end. God's got a story for everybody. For you to accomplish. That's not your end. So let's dig into this thing and, and look at it. Amen. So. Why was he a Nazarite? Uh, he, because he was set apart as a uh, miracle child uh, to an infertile family. That means she was uh, she couldn't have children. And the uh, angel of God came down to her, and uh, she you know she asked she asked uh, 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 the angel of God asked God for a man child uh, of her own lawns. and uh, and she said, "Look, man, if you do, uh, I'm raising the right way." And the angel uh, put out the restrictions for him. Uh, uh, to be this this natural. That's in Numbers chapter six and three two seven. So one of the, the some of the restrictions that Samson had as a Nazarite was uh, the Nazarite vow was to not drink uh, uh, any type of uh, alcohol uh, to get drunk. Uh, he could he couldn't you know cut his hair. Uh, or he couldn't he couldn't go near unclean stuff uh, such as a corpse or anything that's dead. That's, that's things he just could not do. Just. A few minor restrictions on the inside of your life. Now it don't seem like it's it's fair at that point in time period. Uh, however you want to do it, but what's fair is what God has said in His Word. Because you got to always remember, God's always looking uh, 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 months and years and thousand years ahead of you. You don't. You're not all powerful and all knowing. You only have the present ten. You may think a little bit, but God knows all. He knows who you are. He knows your beginning. He knows your end. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strength. God knows your love. He knows everything about you. And if he's putting some restrictions on you, there's a reason. Remember, the culture's got to be embraced. There's a battle for supremacy inside of your life. And so Samson, um, like you say, he, he, he's a member of church just like all of us. And uh, he, he was violent, but he also was prideful. Did you know that that don't work over here in this kingdom over here? Not, not in this culture. Yeah, violence don't work over here, you know. We, we're we not going to fight with fight with our fists and do all that foolishness, all that crazy stuff. That's the way it used to be. And that's what Samson, he's telling Samson, don't do all that. But that's the way Samson was. Man, he'll fight. Samson would throw down. Your mama, Bell. Samson's going to go knock you out, hit you in the eye. You know how y'all used, used to do something? I say something crazy. How your mama? You're going to go and throw your dukes up and all this sort of thing. And also he was proud. Oh my God. So Samson ignores the rules of his Nazarite vow. Uh, he eats honeycomb out of a carcass of a dead uh, uh, lion he slew. That's over there in Judges chapter 14 and 9. I want you to look at that. I'm going to keep it moving, but I'm just pointing out the obvious. Amen. And so remember his vow said he couldn't, he couldn't do that. Don't eat anything to, that, you know, anything that was unclean or, or was a corpse. And here he goes. He comes back and he eats honeycomb out of carcass of a uh, dead, uh, dead lion. He's at a wedding. He's at a wedding feast. Uh, I, I call with present. Don't say whether he drunk any or not. Doesn't get into all that. But uh, he, but uh, <laughs> he's still seeing during the occasion when he kills 30 Philistines, uh, when his wife tricks him. Out of a wager. So he loses the wager and he gets mad and he goes kill 30 folk. That's just crazy. See, over here we can't do that. Just I just just crazy. So, you know, and uh that's just not right. And then um, later on, uh he begins to play. I call it play with his wife, and uh, we're gonna talk about her 
in just a moment. So let's pick up in verse number one. Let's begin to read uh, from Judges chapter uh, 14. Samson went down to Tanai and saw that his this, there was a young Philistine woman. And he returned and said unto his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in, in Tamiah, and now get her for me as my wife. Get her for me. Now that sounds a little bold, doesn't it? Oh my God, doesn't that sound a little bold? You know, I'm amazed at uh, you know, how it was back then. And, and when you read scriptures, you know, you'd be like, who in the fool? Can you, can you just imagine your children, you know, if you got any, uh, imagine them telling you, hey, look, I want that woman of mine. Go get it for me. You hear me? You hear me? Go, go. You better go get her. Talking to your mom and daddy like that? Man, I'm old school. Where I, where I came from, I, I, I know my mom went through the ashtray. I just know. I, I, look, don't y'all call child, child welfare. I did not say throw the, throw the ashtray at your kid. I'm just telling you what happened to us back in the day. They was going to throw an ashtray. They were going to get something boy. They was going to throw something there. They going to knock you out. Because that's just crazy. That don't make no sense. Go and get her with me. I'm, I'm putting this out there so you can see how bold he was. How, how I mean, how, and I mean, just, I mean, just analytical he was. Just look at it. Just bold. We got it. But watch this. His father and mother replied, "Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to this uncircumcised Philistine to get a wife?" But Samson said to his father, "Go get her for me. She's the right one for me." See, right there, that was an ashtray. Bam, right there. He ain't got no teeth. None, none, no teeth. None, none. But he, he keeps on. And they yield to it. Even though they know it's wrong, they keep on yielding. That sounds like that, that you know, like them new age parents to a certain extent this day and time, time period. Let the children, you know, dictate all the actions and uh, all the ways. Let them, let them, you know, let them have what they want to have. Let them do what they want to do. Why are they sitting up under your, your roof? You know what I'm saying? They, they come in when they get ready. You know what I'm saying? They got their key. They know the law and code. They want to come at three or four o'clock in the morning and do what they want to. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they can bring anybody over your house. You know what I'm saying? Give them some food. Cook or something to eat. Just foolishness, just craziness. It's this out there. So, needless to say, they go and get him, and now he takes her as a wife. Even though God's already put her out there, don't no, don't you do, don't you take the women from over there. I don't want you, I don't want you over there learning their ways. But see, Samson loved Delilah. That was his problem. He loved her. And that was his problem. And she's going to use that back against you. Got it? And so this is beginning to get interesting now because now she's going to begin warning him, warn on his life. And so what happens is what she begins to do to him is the Philistine knows that, okay, she's going to sell him out for some money over here in the, in the Bible in Judges 16 and 5. Um, for Samson, it... It came in from the lot of Philistine woman who Samson fell in love with. The Philistine used this to their advantage and bribed her with 1,100 shekels, about three years worth of wages to divulge the secret to Samson's strength so they can overcome him. Wow. One or two things. Either Samson, we already know he's bold and, you know, word they probably use confident or cocky. You know, that's him. He's bold. But they paid her this money to learn the secrets. You know, you got to be careful with some stuff that you want. Because everything you want is not good for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow, praise God. Glory to God. So you're going to have to you're going to have to watch out. Got it. So now let's 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 look at what happened. Let's let's look at what happened. So the problem with Samson, Samson became great in his own eyes. I mean, he was killing all these folk, great warrior, great king, doing all those things. And, uh, you know, he probably got beside himself. You know, the Bible says don't think more highly. See, in this culture, you can't think more highly than you ought to. But you got to remember that those, the, the, the devil's very screwed. See, he was Lucifer. You know what I'm saying? And so he, he wanted to be like the most high God. So he was prideful. And so when you, when that nature it's in you. So when you come over here, you got to get rid of that nature to think more highly of, 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 of yourself than you ought to. 
I'm often wondering why, you know, we see men and women of God are falling from leadership, just falling down. It's because maybe you get too, too confident, too cocky. Maybe you think more highly than you ought to. Hallelujah. You, you ought to. You better be careful. You better be careful and know how to handle it and be able to stay humble. But when you get people just like he did, I got all this strength and nobody can't bother me. Nobody can't harm me. I got all this wisdom. Can't nobody bother me. Can't nobody harm me. I'm rolling. Can't nobody bother me. Can't nobody harm me because I'm rolling. I'm a big shot. Call it, I, I'm untouchable. When you get that attitude, you might want to be careful because pride comes it before a fall. See, they didn't tell you that in, in, in the world. Glory to God. They didn't tell you that. So in other words, Samson became great in his own eye. That's what pride is. Pride is when you become a legend in your own mind. You're the only one to think you all that, but you become a legend on your own mind. So he became he, he, he became great in his own eyes, began uh, pursuing women outside God's plan for his life. It's not wrong with you having a, a, a woman of God, a, 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 having a wife, but you got to stick to God's plan with the wife that you have. There's nothing wrong with you having a husband, but you need to stick to God's plan uh, to have for the husband for your life. Because God knows some things that you don't know. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so they offer her money. They offer her money. And she sells them out for the money. Now watch what happens. So Delilah comes up with this plan. To, I'm going to find out what it is. So she began to come with him, uh, uh, you know, little by little. She's asking questions about your strength. And she makes him a meal and she says, Tell me your secret. And he's, he, he, matter of fact, he responded, but he, he lied to her. She come back again and uh, she, she began to, you know, stroke his head with her hand. You know what I'm saying? She, she knows, she knows how to rub it. You know, she knows how to do her thing. See, that's what I'm saying. You'll find out who she is in just a moment. But she knows, mm, she knows how to work with what she's working with. She knows how to do that. And that's why over here in this culture, you need to have an understanding to put your flesh under subjection because if you're not able to do that, there's some people on this side, on the side that you came from that know how to work with what they're working with. So I got to be careful on this side. She comes this time and she's rubbing his head. She's rubbing and rubbing it. And she will ask the same question, you know, where does, it, where does this stuff come from? And he lies to her again. And so she comes the third time. Now here's what she's about to get about now. She's beginning. She's going to get him on this time right here. She comes back and she begins to question. Watch this. She would hurt question his love for her. Woo. She got it. Remember I told you he loved him some delight. And now this time she come. Back, you don't love me. See, you see that? that that's that, that's the same trick that's working this day and time period. They, look, you kind of live a holy lifestyle, kind of stay concentrated for God. And, and guess what? Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, they want to sleep with you before, you before they put the ring on. They want to sleep with you before you get married. And you're, you're trying to stay holy. And then they hit you with that. You, 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 you don't love me unless you sleep with me. They kind of hit you with it. I'm just going to tell you, but they, they kind of hit you with it. Come on. 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 The game is the same. Different players, but the game is the same. The game is the same. Different player. You're a different player. Player from the Himalaya. But the game is still the same. You don't love me. See? The devil ain't got no new tricks. Just a different flavor. But he's come out the same one. That one's been working for decades. For years and years and years and years and years and years. Because in the old country, that's what worked. And if you don't reculture yourself on this side, it'll work again. It will work again on the inside of your life. And then, in other words, the girl broke him down. She came day by day by day. I'm telling you, the look, she a wife. She was looking good, feeling good, stroking you good. And all of a sudden, man, here you go. She got you. She hit you with the love triangle. Glory to God. And he gives it up. Because the Bible says she continually, she continually went before him and bugged him. She did it day by day by day. And that's how he does it. Day by day by day. Looking for an opportunity. You know, it sounds like something that Jesus encountered when he was out to winners fasting 48 and 49. The devil came day by day. But every single day, Jesus began to say, hey, hey, he began to say, he began to let her know. He began to let the devil know, it, for it is written. See, day by day, it is written. He didn't get wore down. See, that's why you have to keep your relationship with God. As a Nazareth, he had certain things he could not do. He, Because if you do these things, it's going to distance yourself from God. Remember, I talked about the relationship at the beginning. Because when I do these things, I'm, 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 I'm pushing myself further away from God. 
I'm going so far away from God because I keep doing these things that, that pushes me away from it. And one day I wake myself up and I find out that I got no power. And that's what happened to Samson. That's what happened to him. After he tells her, tells her what come from, and it really didn't, it didn't come from that, it came from being set apart with the relationship. But after you do so much foolishness, God can, God can only hang, hang with you so long. So long that he'll give you over to your own lust. They call it a retrobate mind. Your foolishness. You get so far out there. So I have to be recultured. Because you might have been all that over there, but over here, that stuff don't work over here. So I'm, I'm not going to be efficient or effective. And I have to watch out from playing around with stuff. See? You got to ask yourself, because I'm getting ready to close. When did you start reading the press in about you? It's like a national headline on the news, a press release. You ever heard of that? Samson began to read the press. Yeah. People applauding you, telling you how well, how great you are. You talk so elegant, so, 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 so awesome. And they begin to clap. Begin to, he began to believe all the pressing. And the more he thought highly of himself, and he got more highly, he began to read it and joke and, and begin to play around with the devil. And he's saying, I don't, I don't say what God said. God, I ain't worried about it. I can handle, I can handle me over there. I can, you know, I can handle, I, I, used, I used to be down there with the fella. I'd be down there with the women. I know how to handle that. That's why I came out of. I can drink, I can drink with the best of them. You know what I'm saying? They don't tell you, I can drink, I can smoke it with the best of them. No, no, you can't keep playing. I can, lie, I can lie with the best. No, no, no. You got to stop lying. You got to stop lying. You got to stop lying. Got to, st got to stop lying. You know what I'm saying? Glory to God. No, nope, no. Nope. You got to stop running men and women. You got to stop it. You got to stop it. Child, you got to stop it. You got to stop it. You need to get recultured. The battle is between here. Oh, you listen to me. And so one day in verse number 20 in Judges 14, Samson, the Philistine, the Philistines are upon you. Samson stood up, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. Oh, my God. I got clothes. I pick, pick up the rest of that on, on uh, Wednesday night. He stood up, and he that's when he found out the Lord had departed from him. Isn't it amazing? You don't want to find yourself like your brother Samson. He's a great example of, uh, of being in a culture and been set aside over here for kingdom culture and don't embrace it and play games with it. Oh, my God. You're going to find yourself the worse off than you started off. Worse off than what you came out of. When we get recultured, we can't play the game. We got to leave. Some things we got to leave. We got to leave alone. And embrace this culture and have an understanding and embrace the word of God because the devil's trying to put distance between you and God. He's kind of separate you from God because he understand apart from him, you can do nothing. Apart from him, you won't make it. Apart from him, you shall, you will not bear no fruit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then he, watch this, there's nothing going to be added unto your life. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto your life. And when I'm away from him, there is nothing that's going to be added to my life. Glory to God. I'm out of time. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory and honor to God for today's lesson. God, Father, I thank you that this word of God, when it was going forward, Father, I thank you right now, the healing virtue of God was going forward as well, touching the lives of your people and making them whole again. So I believe, oh, by the act of your will, I believe that you're healed from the crowning of your soles and feet and all over your inside. Now in the name of Jesus, my mind, your mind is alert. Your mind is clear now in the name of Jesus. Your organs, glands, and tissue all around you, I believe you're the healed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you for your people. I give you praise. I give you glory and I give you honor in Jesus' name. Come on, shout amen with me. Well, God bless you. Amen. Oh my God. I hope that you were just excited that, that as I were with today's lesson, beginning to learn uh, like our brother Samson that look, man, when I'm recultured, when I get inside of this thing, I can't play the game. I got to understand that there may be some restriction, maybe some limitations that God has for me in my life, but it's to increase my life. 
to keep me operating effectively and efficiently on the inside of my life. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow inside the kingdom of God. Uh, you can text on with your phone, uh, 54244. That's 54244. In the message box, could you please put in an FVCC? It will give you an opportunity to sow your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts of love. Remember, it leaves my hand, but never leaves my life. Because when I sow in the good ground, I always have the just father right to put a man on my tithes, my offerings, and my gifts of love. And so I can petition God on my behalf. Because I'm helping advance and support the kingdom of God. And it is a part of my life. All I got to do is just like in Mark, it says, I go to bed and I get up. But watch this. My seed's working in the ground. First the blade, then the ear. And after that, the full coin in the ear. Shout is working. It's working on the inside of my life. So God bless you. Amen. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, being a part of our service um, this morning. We look forward on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Uh, that you'll be back. And look. Send this out, tag them, send it to them. Let them know that, man, look, you got to listen to this lesson. And look, meet me again. Meet me, I'm telling you, Wednesday at 6 p.m. And I want you to go out today, as well as myself and Pastor Vanessa. Now, we want you to have an amazing day. So God bless you. May God keep you. I'm out of time.